Um, oh my goodness. Well, hello, Des Moines. And uh, wow. Wow, does it feel good to be here and with our next president of the United States. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. And thank you to Bonnie Campbell. Uh, you, speaking of making history, uh, you've made, you, you started making history in Iowa as the first woman AG. You've done so much for our state and you are so much of the reason why myself and Cindy Axney were able to become the first women congresswoman from Iowa. We cannot thank you enough for all that you've done for our state. And uh, before I introduce our next president, uh, some of you in this room I've gotten to know for a long time now. Um, but some of you, <laughs> now we're the same height. Yeah, we're the same height now. This works out well. Um, but some of you, this might be the first time. And you might be wondering, why I decided to endorse our next president here. Um, but to do that, I think you need to understand where I come from and why this is so personal to me. You see, I was a kid who grew up in Cheryl, Iowa, as I, as I like to say, a town with more cows than people. And uh, I grew up in a family where my dad was a union pipe fitter welder. My mom worked for the school district. I was one of four. We were all first generation college graduates. And you see, growing up, speaking of which, I was a college graduate from Drake University. Um, so if we've got any Drake students here. Um, but growing up, you know, I didn't know really anybody in politics or anything like that. But um, I knew my grandfather. And see, my grandfather was somebody that I thought a great deal about and still do today and wish um, he were here with us. Unfortunately, he passed away. But he's somebody that I would sit around the kitchen table with when I was 10 years old. He was a Democrat and a firefighter. And I had it. Oh, <laughs> I had an uncle who would also sit around that kitchen table, and he was a Democrat and small business owner, and I had another uncle who would sit around that table, and he was a Republican and a lawyer. And uh, we would sit there as I was at the age of 10, and we would get together after uh, dinner on Saturday nights after we'd go to church, and we would talk about what was going on in the world. And you see, the reason I bring this up is because those nights taught me two very, very important lessons. One was that even though I was a young girl, I had every right to a seat at the table as a grown man. Second, <laughs> right, Bonnie? <laughs> Second was even though we would disagree, and oh boy, would we, uh, we could still hug each other at the end of the night, say I love you, and can't wait to see you next week. And I remember thinking to myself that that's how this should be. That's how public policy should be. And, you know, again, my grandfather is the guy that I took a lot of advice from and listened to a great deal. And, in fact, it was back in 2007 when I happened to be a page for the Speaker of the Iowa House where all of a sudden I get this phone call. See, remember, this is 2007. We had also a lot of people running for president back in 2007. Um, but back then, I mean, if your last name was not Obama or Clinton, uh, <laughs> not a lot of people knew who was all running. So my grandfather calls me and goes, hey, I heard that the senator from Delaware is coming to the Capitol. You got to go see him. You got to go hear him. And I'm like, I don't know who this senator from Delaware is, but OK. Um, I guess, you know, I got to listen to Papa. So I go. And I remember walking into that room in that Iowa House, House caucus room where I walked in. And I got to say, I didn't know who Joe Biden was walking in, but I sure as heck knew who he was walking out. And he's. <laughs> He's the guy who understands families like mine, where it was about the tough conversation sitting around the kitchen table wondering when the phone was going to ring for dad's next job. You see, he understood our values here in Iowa. They were a part of who he was and who he is. And I knew in that moment that he was somebody we needed in our country. And uh, it has been an honor to get to see you over the last few years as 
well as vice president and your years as senator. Um, but it's also been an honor to see you have the values that we all hold so dear. Because, see, the thing that the vice president also understands is that thing we used to talk a lot about, which is hope. You remember that? You remember it well. Back in 2008, we talked a lot about hope. And in 2018, we talked a lot about hope around that first congressional district. You see, he understood that it's about hope and the idea that if you work hard, you shouldn't just be able to make a living, you should be able to have a good life. And the vice president understands the difference. And you see, he understood that it's about hope and the idea that your kids should get a good education and can do better than you did. And it's about hope and the idea that, God forbid, you get sick, you don't have to file for bankruptcy. And it's about hope and the idea that you can work hard on your family farm, pass it on to the next generation without waking up every single morning right now, worried about your future because of a trade war that this current president decided to start on Twitter. See, that's what this is about. That's what we have to fight for. And we cannot take our foot off the pedal. We have to do everything we can to make sure we have somebody in the White House who believes that there is more value in bringing us together as a country, uniting us versus driving fear and division. It is more important than ever, and I gotta tell you after my last year in Congress, I know that to be true. And it is exactly why I decided to endorse Joe Biden for president. And I'll end with this because it's really, really important. You see my grandfather that I talked about, the firefighter? He's the guy that taught me what public service was all about because I think our firefighters are some of the best examples about what public service means. See, when my grandfather would get a phone call to run into a burning building, he didn't call back and ask, what color is your skin? How much money do you make? Where are you from? What's your religion? Who do you love? He didn't ask those questions. He just showed up and he helped people and he did his job. Friends, that's what we absolutely need to keep in that U.S. House. That's why y'all have got to send back Cindy Axney with me. Uh, it's, what we, it's what we must have in that U.S. Senate, and it is exactly why we need Joe Biden in that White House. And so, and so without further ado, it gives me great pleasure as the working class kid from Cheryl, Iowa, who grew up in Dubuque, who is now a congresswoman in Iowa's first congressional district, to endorse for president of the United States and introduce the working class kid from Scranton, Pennsylvania, our next president, Joe Biden. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Cindy, we got a seat over here for you. Thank you. Thank you.